live to the trading desk. So much to talk about with Victor Adair. Uh, Vic, uh, I remember chatting with you after the the Thanksgiving weekend and saying, "Man, you must be having a good Thanksgiving because you had played gold to go down, and boy, it cooperated with you. you had a couple other things on the go there that all worked out." But I want to start by getting your latest update on gold. Uh, at the moment, I'm flat. Uh, we did get short gold, uh, let's say about two weeks following the Brexit uh, vote. Gold had got up to around 1350, 1360 thereabouts. Uh, now, you know, bear in mind, it had rallied $300 from where it had been in December of last year, around Christmas time, mm -hmm. and those were six year lows. So it had this $300 rally, and while it had that rally, we saw speculators come into the paper gold market. I, I keep making that distinction. That's different than bars. The paper gold market, the futures market, they came in like in, in, in a wave like we've never seen before. So in the simplest sense, I was looking at this and thinking, this market has really overbought any bad news, and it could start to back up. And these people are not buying gold because they believe in gold. They're just buying something that's going up. So therefore, you know, they've got no call it allegiance, and if it starts to go down, they'll just throw it over the side. Mm -hmm. And when they start to throw it over the side, you know, it, it, acts, it, it builds momentum. So that was really part of the trade. The other part of the trade is, as you know on the show here, I've been bullish the U.S. dollar for the past few years in one way or another. So usually a rising U.S. dollar is not good news for gold. So I had two reasons to be short. Gold did have a good fall. We got into the October lows, I guess, of the second and third week of October, I liquidated my positions. I thought it had gone down too far too fast. And at the moment, I think maybe the U.S. dollar, which has had a great run lately, maybe had gone a little bit too far to the upside. So I've kind of pulled back on my positions. Do you, is the presidential election outcome sort of uh, having anything to do with your trading? Is it, I mean, in this way, that you say, look, there's a lot of uncertainty about that election. You know, we got a big announcement yesterday, the FBI resuming its investigation of the Clinton emails uh, in another aspect of it. But, but again, it just sort of sends uncertainty through the marketplace. Yeah, it really does, Mike. And, of course, and here's something nobody's paying attention to, and I just saw this, that the third-party candidate, the libertarian fellow, Johnson, you know, who ever heard of him, right? Yeah. He's getting 11% of the, in the polling. I don't think he's not going to win, but it might affect the difference between Clinton and, and Trump. I don't know. You know, I really don't. I'm not making any bets that, you know, Trump will win or Hillary will win. I'm sure it will have an impact on the market. and I'm not really sure what the impact would be. You know, take a page out of Tyler's book. I love the, his view on, you know, don't try to figure it out. Just look what's, look what's happening. Sure. So, yes, here's what I think is happening. I think people are pulling back from the market right now. It feels like there's less liquidity. You know, we've got a lot of uncertainty, not just the, the election, the Fed meeting, OPEC meeting coming up, other things. It feels to me, in a way, a bit like the calm before the storm. I think we're going to really have some volatility as we go into the uh, end of the year. Vic, let me finish with uh, interest rates in the bond market. Uh, you know, what's the market telling you? Uh, it doesn't have to be your opinion. It's what the market's telling you about what the interest rate scenario is with the Federal Reserve. Okay, again, I'll duplicate a bit of what Tyler, uh, Tyler said earlier. We had the all-time historic lows for interest rates made just following the Brexit. Okay, that remember at the time we were talking about yeah. $12 trillion worth of sovereign bonds trading at negative yields? So maybe that was the inflection point, or in other words, the top to this 35-year bull market we've had in bonds, maybe. Now, a lot of guys have been thrown under the bus for making that call before, <laughs> you know, and the bond market just keeps marching higher. But if, and this is the thing, this is the way I trade, but if that's turning, and we've, we've been short of the bonds here for a month and a half or so, there's positioning risk. In other words, there's been huge bets made. For instance, you, you were talking with Michael Levy earlier, all those people that bought the Austrian bonds, they're not buying them to hang on to them for seven, 70 years. You know, they're buying them because they can sell them to some other pigeon for uh, more money. There's been positioning risk where people are expecting interest rates to either stay low or go lower. But if that reverses and goes the other way, a whole lot of people are going to be wrong, and there's going to be an impact all across financial markets if we're having a real sea change in interest rates. Good stuff as always, Victor. There's so much going on as you just chronicled, and we'll be here, thankfully, to have you to share your thoughts with us and insights on how to make sense of it all. Uh, go out and have a terrific weekend. Okay, thank you.